This is a story of strange places, quests and encounters with men from past and present. I was sent here by an occult order in England to which I belonged at the time, and uh, I was told to find the place where a, a brotherhood in the Middle Ages had been extinguished. And uh, he actually said that uh, he had been awaiting my arrival because this was the year of the Grail. So I was a little puzzled by that, but he said this is 1937, the year of the Grail, and I have been awaiting your coming. <laughs> so. Did you see seekers of the Grail already? Did oh, any number of them, yes. They came in hordes from all sorts of places with all sorts of different ideas. The Holy Grail, the Middle Ages, a challenge and a crisis without parallel for the church, a bloody, brutal war long forgotten, and a castle in the furthest reaches of the south of France, scene of ancient tragedy, Montségur. Perched high on a mountain, the mighty Pyrenees at its back, Montségur awaits the dawn of summer, the time for pilgrims to gather. Un instant magique, au matin du 22 juin, le solstice d'été, la nuit la plus courte ouvre sur le jour le plus long. À cet instant privilégié, le soleil se lève sur Montségur et son premier rayon pénètre à l'intérieur du château. Montségur, dernier refuge des adversaires dangereux du catholicisme. Montségur pour certains, temple solaire. Montségur pour d'autres, château du Graal. Legend says this man is the first bearer of the Grail, Joseph of Arimathea, the rich Jew who buried Jesus and caught his blood in a cup. Others say it's the cup used at Last Supper, the elusive Grail, symbol of the Middle Ages, associated with dangerous quests, King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table. To the English, it is the secret of ancient Glastonbury, the Isle of Avalon, where Joseph of Arimathea traveled to plant his staff and hide the grail, a legend to be treated with some cynicism. It was immediately after the great fire, around about 1180, when the monastery desperately needed to raise funds, and the grail story was now emerging, and of course there was the story of Joseph of Arimathea having come here, and uh, it all fitted in very nicely, and uh, the abbey was able to raise funds to rebuild. The full story of Joseph of Arimathea and the Holy Grail, the Christian Grail as we have it, really only emerges in the High Middle Ages. And it may take its origin from a much earlier period, at a time when monks traveled between Egypt and Ireland. Earliest writings refer to a Joseph of Abaramusi after the monastery of Baramus, Egypt and Joseph of Arimathea carries the two crutches used in rituals by the Coptic Christians of Egypt. Of course, in the later Middle Ages, they couldn't make any sense of Yusuf Baramusi. The nearest Christ name of Christian significance, of course, was Joseph of Arimathea. And witness another part of the legend and of Joseph of Arimathea. C'est sur cette plage des Saintes Marie de la Mer que serait arrivé le Graal en Europe, d'après la légende. Un événement qui est célébré chaque année, l'arrivée de Joseph d'Arimati et des Saintes Marie porteuses du Graal. Legend, the arrival of Joseph of Arimathea with other close companions of Jesus draws thousands of gypsies from all over Europe in pilgrimage every year. There's precious little proof for his journey in a leaking boat all the way from Palestine. But the story tells that this is how the Grail found its way to southern France. 
And here, an age-old conflict within Christianity erupted into bloody war. Here, the church dealt brutally with the challenge from its oldest rival, a last wave of Gnostics, the Cathars, those who passed through catharsis, the perfect, the purified. A crisis from which the legend of the Grail arose, a tragedy which would end at Montségur. Ceux qui sont réunis ce matin au pied de ce château de Montségur sont venus se souvenir d'un acte barbare commis il y a 750 ans. Il y a 750 ans, 215 parfaits, après un siège de 10 mois de ce château, sont descendus et ont été jetés dans un enclos et brûlés. Ce bûcher de Montségur mettait fin à l'hérésie cathare. Pour la plupart, ces hommes et ces femmes sont les descendants des soldats et des familles qui se sont battus, qui ont résisté pendant dix mois dans ce château de Montségur. Ces gens luttent aujourd'hui contre l'intolérance qui assassina le catharisme. Le catharisme qui est né au Moyen-Orient et qui avait des racines aussi puissantes, aussi fortes que le catholicisme. The Cathars were not forerunners of the Reformation. They were not a heresy of the Catholic or the Protestant faith. This was a faith that was completely different and went back to the earliest times of Christianity and even before that, when people experienced this world as a world of shadows turned with their back towards reality, towards the true world, the spiritual world, the divine world, and they thought they could find that within themselves. They didn't need any intermediation, either of the church or of the Bible. In 1945, Egyptian farmers from Nag Hammadi found a hoard of old parchments, they were hidden at the dawn of Christianity by men fearing persecution from fellow Christians. The find gave Gilles Quispel scientific standing around the world. The documents he helped translate and publish were the teachings of the Gnostics. To Gnostics, this world is not a real world, but one of shadows only. The key to the true and divine world is called Gnosis, knowledge, felt in the heart. And to them, that is what Jesus truly taught. This are the hidden words which the living Jesus spoke and Didymus Judas Thomas wrote and he said whoever finds the explanation of these words will not taste death. Thus begins the Gnostic Gospel of Thomas. It has as good a claim to represent the true words of Jesus as the known Gospels. Written before Mark and Matthew, Luke and John came even two or three generations after Christ. The Cathars were Gnostics. As such, they were the inheritors of the ancient Gnostics that lived in Alexandria in Egypt at the beginning of our era. They were Jews who lived in exile and had found an unknown God in their heart. But at the same time, they couldn't find the same God in the world because the world is full of evil and of misery. And therefore, they decided that this world had been created by a lesser God, Jehovah, their tribal deity. The world, a hell. It cannot be the work of the good God. He didn't create heaven and earth. That God of the Old Testament created matter only, obscuring a true and divine world. To Gnostics, Jehovah is a false God. Creating man, he imprisons him in matter, drags him into a life of pain to end in death. And man, created in his image, 
is so absorbed in creating more and more that he ignores the spark of the divine which is within him. But man may find that light of the divine, if not in this life, then in another, for Gnostics believed in reincarnation. When the Jews of Egypt, of Alexandria, had become Christians, Jesus appealed to their deepest selves and taught them the way within to their innermost being. They said, who knows himself knows God. To Gnostics, Jesus wasn't the son of God, but a messenger who showed the way to one's true self, a way within. To the church, Jesus died for our sins, for sinners is what we are. Our only hope lies in God's mercy through intermediation of the church. The church must point the way and we obey. The church became a perfect organization. It brought forth a confession of faith, which you had to believe, and the canon of the Bible, which you had to accept, and a bishop who determined what was true and was not true. The Gnostics, however, didn't believe in any outward authority. They just followed the gnosis of their heart, and no manager does like that. Then, pagan enemies, we would have two gods. God was not always the father, once he was not. Heretic! Sovereign, the Emperor Constantine, and the Empress Helena! The bitter theological dispute dominates the first centuries of Christianity. Nicaea 324. Constantine, the first Roman emperor to have embraced the faith, has summoned the bishops. What Constantine imposes will become the basis for the Christian creed up until today. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, begotten from the Father... As a God statesman, God, Constantine chooses for the organization. Catholicism prevails, the Gnostic doctrines burn. A faith for individuals, Gnostics stand helpless when Christians start persecuting Christians. Within a century, they're virtually stamped out. Some flee to the distant mountains of Armenia, a refuge which keeps them safe for over 500 years. Around the year 1000, they're forced to settle in Bulgaria, but there they find new strength. Traveling preachers win over Bosnia, find followers in northern Italy, France, Germany, even England, a growing challenge to the church. And nowhere is the ground as fertile as in southern France, the Languedoc, a region without parallel in Europe. In this Europe still obscure of the Age, the Languedoc occupies une place tout à fait particulière. C'est un pays riche, mais c'est aussi un pays libre, un pays où souffle un air de liberté. Un pays qui cultive les arts, qui cultive la littérature. Ainsi, à Toulouse est créée la première Académie des Jeux Floraux qui couronne chaque année les meilleurs poètes. In dark ages, here suddenly are poetry, literature and song. Trade blossoms. The Muslim world nearby brings openness to new ideas. Things are written, said and sung, proclaiming man to be free, free from the clutches of an ignorant and greedy clergy. Here, the great challenge to the church comes into the open. This is a world in which men come with a message of simple spiritual love. They're called Cathars, those who have passed through catharsis, purified and perfect. They shed wealth and marriage, lead lives of austerity which few can follow. But in an age which has little or no eye for a man, they teach an individual way to God. They are received with open arms in a world which longs for purity and freedom of spirit. This is the first country where they're free to spread their word 
and where they are welcome at its many and modest noble courts. C'était une église relativement intellectuelle. C'était un christianisme savant qui plaisait beaucoup à cette caste aristocratique pauvre, mais demeurée cultivée. Et je crois que ce qui a fait le, au départ le succès du christianisme cathar dans la société aristocratique médiévale, c'est l'engouement des femmes. Le catharisme est la religion chrétienne qui donne à la femme le rôle le plus important. Un rôle non seulement de pastoral, mais un rôle sacerdotal. Les femmes peuvent sauver les hommes. Elles ont le pouvoir de lier des liés que le Christ donna aux apôtres. Elles ont le pouvoir de sauver les hommes. Je crois qu'aucune église chrétienne ne donne ce pouvoir de prêtre finalement aux femmes. This was the country of troubadours, poets who began to sing the praise of Cathar daughters of aristocracy, pure and on a quest for the divine. In an age which had no concern for love, love was suddenly sung in every way, spiritual love, carnal love. Troubadours opened the medieval mind to new ways of thinking as they spread courtly love throughout Europe and made woman into their idol. This was the climate from which ultimately a new myth arose. Et soudain, au cœur de ce Moyen-Âge, apparaît un texte énigmatique, la grande aventure des chevaliers du Graal, aventure signée Chrétien de Troyes. Cette aventure connaîtra de multiples, multiples versions jusqu'à la plus complète, celle de Wolfram von Essenbach. Ces versions seront diffusées à travers toute l'Europe, elles couvriront l'Europe entière grâce à des châteaux où se tiennent de véritables cours littéraires. No myth has so conquered the hearts of medieval Europe, of knightly battle, love and quest, the blood of Christ, Joseph of Arimathea, the elusive grail and its mysterious castle in which Christ himself may serve the final mass. Was ist das für eine Sprache? Das war Mittelhochdeutsch von Wolfram von Eschenbach aus dem Parsival, eine Strophe. Parsival, the last and most enigmatic version of the myth. To many its author, Wolfram von Eschenbach, was influenced by Cathar ideas. Parsifal enters this world as an ignorant, excels in brutal knighthood. Reaching the castle of the Grail, he fails to release its guardian, the Fisher King, who is mysteriously wounded. Only exhausted and humiliated, by relinquishing the material world, and abandoning pride, he can ask the simple question of compassion to release the Fisher King and find his grail. It's a man's own way to purity. But then this Parsifal is different from all previous versions of the legend. In all the cycles, the Romans du Graal have served to mobilize the chivalry of the North against the heretics of Languedoc, that is, against the Cathars. These are works of propaganda. Le Graal a été un instrument dans l'arsenal anti cathare La coupe ayant reçu le sang du Christ, c'était vraiment un instrument de la part des auteurs chrétiens catholiques pour mettre l'accent sur la personne du Fils, humain et sanglant. Alors que pour les cathares, la personne suprême de Dieu, c'est l'Esprit. L'hypersacralisation du Fils est un petit peu une réponse supplémentaire contre la, la mode de l'Esprit dans la spiritualité cathare. Ce thème du Graal apparaît à un moment justement où l'Église se posait un certain nombre de problèmes, en particulier au sujet de l'Eucharistie. Et ce n'est pas du tout un hasard si tout le cycle s'articule autour de la proclamation en 1215 par le Concile du Latran du dogme de la transsubstantiation, c'est-à-dire de ce mystère par lequel le Christ devient, euh, par lequel le pain de l'hostie et le vin deviennent réellement le corps du Christ. Ce que justement les cathares ne croyaient pas. Le corps du Christ. 
pour eux, il était impossible que Dieu se soit incarné dans une chose aussi vile qu'un corps matériel, qu'un corps humain, une création diabolique. Pour eux, la vie du Christ sur terre n'avait été qu'une apparence, une apparence de vie humaine. Et sa passion, sa mort sur la croix n'avait été, elle aussi, euh, qu'une apparence. Et il est impossible, absolument impossible, qu'il soit présent réellement dans l'hostie. Eucharistie and Grail. Weapons for the greatest test the Church had faced so far. They weren't the only ones. The gentle order of Franciscans was founded to win back the hearts of the poor, almost lost to the humble Cathars. Rome set the brilliance of Saint Dominic against the Gnostics. In theological debate, they would prove his equals. But his new order of Dominicans would forge a weapon specially for the occasion, the Inquisition, to raise fear for centuries to come. And Rome gave the call to arms. Lured by papal promise of loot and conquest, the Christian armies of the north gather for an unparalleled crusade against their own. Au cœur de cet été 1209, l'armée du nord de la France, renforcée par des Néerlandais, par des Frisons, ainsi que par des Allemands, arrive devant cette ville formidable de Béziers. Oui, une ville formidable, tout entourée de murs, 15 000, 20 000 personnes, une capitale industrielle, commerciale, avec une, une agriculture extraordinaire. Et là-dedans, 200 Qatars que les légats du pape demandent aux citoyens de la ville de livrer. Une fois le siège mis, il ne reste plus qu'une nuit aux gens de Béziers à rester en paix. Le lendemain, une porte est forcée, la troupe ennemie entre et les gens se mettent à fuir, à fuir, à fuir, à fuir dans la ville pour essayer de trouver un refuge vers les églises, vers la Madeleine là-bas. Le papal laggard orders kill them all. God will recognize his own. Dans les églises, c'est le massacre, c'est le scandale, chrétien comme chré, contre chrétien et au nom du Christ. La première fois dans l'histoire du monde, la chanson dit que même contre les sarrasins, on n'a pas fait pire. Des flots de sang, des centaines, des milliers de personnes, une vie d'exterminer. Oui. Tuer les tous et Dieu reconnaîtra les siens. Oui, Dieu reconnaîtra les siens, enfin, s'il a le temps, s'il peut. Qatar euh, est catholique, exactement comme on l'avait décidé pour frapper de terreur toute une population. The massacre has been compared with Hiroshima, and not without reason, the 20,000 victims then would have made 10 times as many now. Et les Qatars viennent se réfugier ici, à Minerve, au milieu des montagnes, dans un site qui paraît inaccessible. Et c'est là, dans cette petite cité, que se va se dérouler le second grand drame de la croisade. Et cette fois-ci, c'est le bûcher, le vrai, le premier. Lorsqu'il se rend, on demande aux Qatar s'ils veulent abjurer leur foi. Ils répondent non, ils doivent être brûlés. C'est la loi de l'Église. Là, dans le pré, on a dressé un bûcher. Et là-dessus, on va les précipiter, mais non, c'est eux qui se précipitent. Qui se précipitent parce que... ils savent, ayant été consolés, qu'ils vont rejoindre le Père. Ils sont convaincus que leur aventure d'humanité va s'achever dans la divinité. Et il saute et il meurt là. 140 hommes et femmes fidèles à leur foi. Everywhere the stakes burn, in the Languedoc, but also in the German Rhinelands. 189 burn on one day in Champagne, 400 in Verona, Italy. The longer duck is put to the sword. It withers under 20 years of crusades as the church casts its curse upon the Cathars. Be they damned every day and every night. May their eyes turn blind, their feet no longer walk. 
May they be buried with dogs and donkeys, and hungry wolves devour their flesh. But even their bones are dug up, as the church systematically destroys whatever memory remains of them. Il ne reste plus que cela, un extraordinaire réseau de souterrains refuges, des souterrains comme celui-ci, qui ont été creusés par la population pour les cathares, pour leur survie, pour leur prédication, pour leur cérémonie, pour les sacrements qu'ils devaient donner à leurs croyants. Et à partir d'ici, ils ont mené pendant près d'un siècle une véritable guérilla contre les croisés d'abord, puis contre l'Inquisition, avec bien entendu le soutien de, des populations. C'est d'ailleurs l'Inquisition qui a fini par briser l'esprit du Languedoc. And here, another thing remains. Tens of thousands of meticulous interrogations, scant remains of a third degree given an entire population. Confession d'Adalaïs du bourg de Tignac. Voilà la bureaucratie inquisitoriale. On a conservé des milliers de dépositions devant le tribunal d'inquisition, des populations entières de villages qui ont été interrogées minutieusement. Raymonde, ma maîtresse, me dit que cette Azalaïs, sa sœur, avait un fils nommé Raymond Azema qui allait avec les hérétiques. Voilà, c'est sœur contre sœur, fils contre mère, voisin contre voisine. On dit aux gens, pour prouver nous que vous êtes sincère, alors dénoncez vos parents. Et on institutionnalise à la délation. Et cette société implose. The agony of the land is on these faces. Yet it takes more than a hundred years before the last Cathar burns. The Languedoc is exhausted, its people literally decimated. The gloom will last for centuries. Montségur, mountain refuge become Cathar Holy See and headquarters. Here the tragedy found its climax. A siege of ten months brought it down, but just before it fell, a Cathar leader and three men passed through enemy lines unseen to disappear in the hundreds of caves nearby. What they carried would create a rumor for centuries to come. Was it treasure, or just by preserving themselves, the hope to preserve their faith, or as legend would later make it, the Holy Grail? At Montségur's surrender, 220 Cathars died at the stake. History was written by the victors. The no Cathar ever killed a Catholic, the church would paint them as brutal killers, worse than barbarians. Pendant des siècles, l'Église a tenté de faire oublier les bûchers et le catharisme. Mais depuis une cinquantaine d'années, grâce à des poètes, grâce à des historiens, mais aussi grâce à des sociétés ésotériques qui se sentaient proches du catharisme, Montségur est sorti de l'oubli, est sorti de la nuit. Grâce aussi à un homme énigmatique, Antonin Gadal. Occult societies and esoteric groups have developed a deep interest in the Grail, a symbol of some secret quest, the epitome of their own search. From such background is Antonin Gadal, a man of local standing around Montségur. As a young man, Walter Burks was close to him, was even designated successor to Gadal, self-styled guardian of the Cathar secrets. He said, this is 1937, the year of the Grail, and I have been awaiting your coming. I was sent here by an occult order in England to which I belonged at the time, and uh, I was told to find the place where a, a brotherhood in the Middle Ages had been extinguished and I read various books about it and particularly Maurice Magre, the uh, Return of the Magi it was called, and he 
uh, described in, in exciting detail how the Brotherhood was finally walled up in this cave. And he uh, described some 500 Cathars being walled up here and dying in the darkness and uh, finally the bones being excavated 250 years later. Bones were found, but those bones are shown by scientists to be prehistoric, so there is no connection with the Cathars at all. Just a story. Just, just a story, yes. But Gedal is convinced the last Cathars sought refuge here. He finds symbolic stones, a cave for initiation ceremonies, even something like a grail he thought the Cathars used. Over here on the wall is the sacred pentacle in which, so it was said, the initiate stood when he shed all materiality. Now, I'm afraid at my age, I'm not quite nimble enough to climb up there. Well, this was supposed to be the perfect man. The, the Bafe were regarded as Christs. They were treated as Christs. Uh, the idea was that anybody uh, could achieve perfection as Christ himself did. This is the basis of the alternative tradition in Christianity. And hence, the place where a Christ is born is Bethlehem. But nobody had heard of this cave being called Bethlehem except by Mr. Gallo. Visionary or fantasist? But Gerald's revelations have been eagerly absorbed by another visitor in the early 30s, a young German, Otto Rahn, scion of a country torn between dreams of glory and grandeur and a rancor from a lost world war. Otto Rahn will write a book which will raise dust. Je suis donc venu au monde dans le rayonnement magique du Graal. Parsival, Siegfried, Odin Votan ont été mes parrains. Sans ce romantique allemand, Autoran, il n'y aurait pas eu de renouveau du Graal, renouveau de Montségur, renouveau des Cathares. Crusade against the Grail, a book in which the German writes down all the visions and ideas of Antonin Gadal. Il a trouvé en Autoran, celui qui était capable d'écrire un livre, un livre qui serait traduit, pensait-il, dans le monde entier, et ainsi les Allemands, les Néerlandais, les Anglais, tout le monde se serait précipité ici pour voir les grottes initiatiques du, des Cathares, des porteurs et des adorateurs du Graal. Et quel merveilleux livre, puisque ce livre sait que Montségur est le château, le château du Graal. Smuggled out of Montségur before it fell, the grail to be hidden in caves nearby, says Rahn. Otto Rahn is a frequent visitor of the family of Christian Benadak, who lives close by. It's one of the reasons why Benadak is fascinated by the German. Curieusement, à son arrivée, il portait déjà un pull vert avec le S, le double S des SS. C'est-à-dire qu'à cette époque-là, Les SS n'avaient pas trouvé leur sigle encore. Et curieusement, sur cette photo prise dans la Villa Bernadac en 1931, Hitler ne prend le pouvoir qu'en 1933. Autoran porte déjà le pull vert de la SS, alors que la SS n'a pratiquement pas d'existence. Hitler founding an empire meant to last a thousand years, yet few have realized how deeply it was rooted in weird ideology and occultism. Main proponent is a man of immense power, Heinrich Himmler, Führer of the SS, head of the Gestapo. Himmler likes Rahn's book, is fascinated by the Grail. Rahn is appointed to the SS, member of Himmler's general staff. Ja, die Graals-Idee ist ja übernommen worden von der Thule-Gesellschaft schon, von den Theosophen und Anthroposophen und von dort her ja auch in Wien auf Hitler und im Nachhinein auch auf Himmler geradezu übertragen worden, sodass beide, die intellektuell keine große Ausbildung hatten, 
das in einer volkstümlichen Form vermischt haben, aber sich gerne in dieser Weise gezeigt haben. Hitler as Parsifal, savior of the Holy Grail of German blood. His Praetorian Guard, the SS, are the spearhead of this new German people. Heinrich Himmler's black hole of death, poised to attain purity of race. Himmler inspecting concentration camps. He saw them as an initiation ground, a place where his SS could steal its character and share the secret of death. And this is the Wevelsburg, his secret castle of the round table, where the highest 12 of his innermost circle would gather to plan the future. Er wollte sich von niemandem hier in die Karten sehen lassen. Von hier aus sollte eigentlich das innere Leben der SS gestaltet werden. The chosen few of SS scientists, the Gruppe Ahnenerbe, will work on a new order, a new mankind, even a new religion rooted in weird occultism. Expeditions are sent to Iceland and Tibet to seek the mythical fatherland of Thule and weird fantasies of a heroic Aryan age, eras before Christianity. Seine Leute haben ja versucht, das Christentum so umzuformen, dass seine eigentlichen Ursprünge im Arischen und nicht im Bereich des Vorderen Orients zu suchen seien. Zunächst musste er zurückgreifen auf alle möglichen okkulten Ideen und Ideologien, die es ja in der Geschichte des Abendlandes genug gegeben hat. Zum Beispiel bei der Graalsforschung. Man kam auf die Katara, um aus dem frühen Mittelalter zu schon zu beweisen, dass das Christentum, wie es sich darstellte, eher Macht über die Menschen haben wollte in einem Sinne, den die SS überwinden wollte, ohne dabei zu sagen, dass die Menschen dann in eine völlig neue Abhängigkeit geführt worden wären. What Himmler liked about Rahn's book is finding Gnostics who reject the Jewish God of the Old Testament, who shed the clutches of the Church. For several years, Rahn works on Himmler's general SS staff, but he will disappoint his boss. Otto Rahn is, d'abord, is probably shocked by his presence in a camp of concentration. He goes to a camp of concentration. He goes to Oranienburg, to Buchenwald, to Dachau. Bon, et, et il voit les crimes. Bon, c'est pas les chambres à gaz encore, mais il voit les brutalités, l'horreur. Bon, euh, il est probable que ça lui pose quand même des, des sérieux problèmes. Ensuite, on l'envoie euh, dans ces fameux hôtels euh, de, du Lebensborn, où de, de jeunes ariennes et belles, toutes blondes, bien, euh, offrent leur corps euh, pour enfanter. Autoran a servi d'étalon. Euh, tout cela doit le, doit le choquer profondément. Et surtout, on lui réclame son certificat d'arianisation. C'est-à-dire qu'il doit prouver qu'il n'y a pas de juif dans, sa, dans son ascendance. Bon. Et là, il est incapable de le fournir. Parce que sa grand-mère maternelle, et ça aussi j'ai trouvé les documents, était d'origine juive. En mars 39, Rahn's body is found on a mountain slope in Austria. Suicide, romantics say, like a Cathar, choosing to shed his material existence for union with the divine. Execution is more probable. A bizarre episode, but Ran and also Gadal are foremost amongst the ones who brought the past back into focus. Every year, hundreds of thousands now visit the caves in Castle Montségur, not for Nazi fantasies, but trying to touch a gentle faith that was erased from the earth. And many seek themselves, though some did also go in search of the grail. People were prepared to dig almost anywhere, and they usually got uh, some inspired knowledge uh, from some supernatural source of where to dig. 
The Grail is not a material object which you can actually find physically. It's a, a symbol, really, of the possibility of absorbing something of the divine. Obviously, if we have an experience uh, of divinity, we cannot absorb that, uh, except to the extent to which we have the capacity in the form of symbolically a cup which can hold some portion of the divine light. So that really the quest for the grail is the quest within ourselves. This is a story of strange places, quests and encounters with men from past and present. I was sent here by an occult order in England to which I belonged at the time, and uh, I was told to find the place where a, a brotherhood in the Middle Ages had been extinguished. And uh, he actually said that uh, he had been awaiting my arrival because this was the year of the Grail. So I was a little puzzled by that, but he said, this is 1937, the year of the grail, and I have been awaiting your coming. <laughs> so. Did you see seekers of the grail really deep? Oh, any number of them, yes. They came in hordes from all sorts of places with all sorts of different ideas. The Holy Grail, the Middle Ages, a challenge and a crisis without parallel for the church. Legend says this man is the first bearer of the grail, Joseph of Arimathea, the rich Jew who buried Jesus and caught his blood in a cup. Others say it's the cup used at Last Supper, the elusive grail, symbol of the Middle Ages, associated with dangerous quests, King Arthur and his Knights of the Round Table. To the English, it is the secret of ancient Glastonbury, the Isle of Avalon, where Joseph of Arimathea traveled to plant his staff and hide the grail, a legend to be treated with some cynicism. It was immediately after the great fire, around about 1180, when the monastery desperately needed to raise funds, and the grail story was now emerging, and of course there was the story of Joseph of Arimathea. A bloody, brutal war long forgotten, and a castle in the furthest reaches of the south of France, scene of ancient tragedy, Montségur. Perched high on a mountain, the mighty Pyrenees at its back, Montségur awaits the dawn of summer, the time for pilgrims to gather. Un instant magique, au matin du 22 juin, le solstice d'été, la nuit la plus courte ouvre sur le jour le plus long. À cet instant privilégié, le soleil se lève sur Montségur et son premier rayon pénètre à l'intérieur du château. Montségur, dernier refuge des adversaires dangereux du catholicisme, Montségur pour certains, temple solaire, Montségur pour d'autres, Château du Graal. Mathéa having come here, and uh, it all fitted in very nicely, and uh, the Abbey was able to raise funds to rebuild. The full story of Joseph of Arimathea and the Holy Grail, the Christian Grail as we have it, really only emerges in the High Middle Ages, and it may take its origin from a much earlier period, at a time when monks 
traveled between Egypt and Ireland. Earliest writings refer to a Joseph of Abaramusi after the monastery of Baramus, Egypt. And Joseph of Arimathea carries the two crutches used in rituals by the Coptic Christians of Egypt. Of course, in the later Middle Ages, they couldn't make any sense of Yusuf Baramusi. The nearest Christ name of Christian significance, of course, was Joseph of Arimathea. And witness another part of the legend that of Joseph of Arimathea. C'est sur cette plage des Saintes Marie de la Mer que serait arrivé le Graal en Europe, d'après la légende. Un événement qui est célébré chaque année, l'arrivée de Joseph d'Arimati et des Saintes Marie porteuses du Graal. Legend. The arrival of Joseph of Arimathea with other close companions of Jesus draws thousands of gypsies from all over Europe in pilgrimage every year. There's precious little proof for his journey in a leaking boat all the way from Palestine. But the story tells that this is how the Grail found its way to southern France. And here, an age-old conflict within Christianity erupted into bloody war. Here, the church dealt brutally with the challenge from its oldest rival, a last wave of Gnostics, the Cathars, those who passed through Catharsis, the perfect, the purified. A crisis from which the legend of the Grail arose, a tragedy which would end at Montségur.